time I paid attention to the trouble I was in. Couldn't see my world was crumbling. No, I couldn't see it then. Hello, everybody, and uh, <laughs> welcome to my second edition of my music and conversation here on Facebook and YouTube. Welcome. Um, we had a lot of fun uh, last week uh, for many different reasons. We had a great guest, Javier Colon, of course, winner of uh, The Voice season one. Um, and, uh, you know, vocalist extraordinary. Um, happy for him to be a part of my new album, Alone Together. Uh, sang a wonderful, wonderful version of Baker Street, of course. But then, uh, because we're, we're also getting used to a new platform here um, from where we are uh, sort of we're using to broadcast, uh, it's called StreamYard. And I'm, it's a lot of fun to uh, all these little elements, and you'll see us some a little bit later. But welcome to this edition. We are going to um, uh, implement a little more music uh, for you and, and maybe even uh, a live duet performance which is something I have never done before. I've done it many other ways, but not actually on the spot. So I'm very excited about that. I hope you are too. Um, this week's guest is a, is a, it's a girl, it's a woman that I've known for uh, quite a few years now. And uh, she is an incredible uh, talent singer, of course, and, uh, but one of the sweetest people I also know. And I think we originally met uh, as she was touring with uh, Chris Bodie, but um, we have certainly done a lot of wonderful things together now. Um, she appeared on uh, at first on my album, Second Nature, a song called uh, Some Kind of Way. And uh, now we uh, she has been on my stage at show a couple of times as my special guest. And, um, and she's doing her own stage at shows, as a matter of fact. Um, wonderful, wonderful talent. And I went to see her show. I was so impressed with her. It's so great. And, um, you know, instead of me sitting talking and telling you everything about um, Sai, I want to bring her on so we can talk to her live and uh, hear more about her upbringing and her influences and what she's up to, all of that. So please welcome Sai Smith to uh, the program. Hello, Sai. Hi, Michael. How are you? I am wonderful. Thanks for being here. Oh, thanks for having me. <laughs> you know, I was going to go on with this whole thing and read your whole bio and thing, but I, I said, let me just bring her on so, so we could sort of talk about it uh, together. <laughs> sure. So, yeah. Alone together. Alone together. <laughs> I know. Here, here we are alone <laughs> together. You know, um, first of all, right off the bat, I have to tell you, thank you, Sai. I, I think you, I, I owe you so many things I can't, I can't even say, you know, um, uh. First of all, thank you for being a part of the new album, Alone Together. Um, you absolutely killed it once again. Do, oh, you, do you know anything but killing it? Oh, man. <laughs> Musically, you're just, you're just, everything I see from you, everything that you do is, is it's not 100%, it's like 1,000%. Oh, thank you. Thank you for so, that. So thank you so much for being a part of the album. It's, it's, a, it's a very interesting project, as you know, because it was really not planned out. It was something that happened uh, because of the pandemic and my stage at shows and we started introducing special guests on the show and and right. uh, I asked you pretty early on and you said sure let's do it yeah uh, yeah yeah <laughs> and uh, well, and so you. thank you very much for doing it thank oh you. thanks for having me Michael it's um it's always fun when uh, you know artists we meet each other on the road and we you know we meet each right. other in tour life and we always say oh let's work together let's do something let's do something but rarely do we really get the chance to right. do it because most of us are always working so well we're in different places of the world at exactly. all times it's very hard to you know actually get together exactly so um so you know i was i was really pleased and, and honored to get the call from you um back in the day when you called me for um second nature and and it's been a pleasure just working with you you know every time we do it it's all it's always a pleasure you're always you know, so pristinely good at what you do, you know, that it makes me up my game. <laughs> well, the tr the, hey, listen, you, you know what? I appreciate you saying that, but the truth is I, my talent is to uh, surround myself with talented people. It makes me look better. <laughs> so, but thank you for saying that. I mean, obviously you came in and sang a song that was um, co-written by, well, by myself, but also by Saida Garrett and Barry Eastman. We had Barry, producing the album and and I mean um, it was it was uh, what a wonderful collaboration that song has been for me I, I I love the song but I love our 
our chemistry and our sort of uh, playing off each other. I, I love the song, and I love our chemistry on the song. I love how the record turned out. But I got to tell you, Michael, like, when, when I got to the studio, I mean, you told me that Saida Garrett had written, you know, the lyrics, and, and Barry Eastman was producing it. But when I got to the studio and saw Barry, I, like, I was like, holy, I have made it. <laughs> that was like a dream come true. Um, well, see, you know, I didn't know. I didn't know that you knew of. I mean, I would assume you knew it, Barry. Uh, Barry Eastman, we're talking about, is uh, uh, the producer of that whole album. But he um, he produced three albums for me um, so far. You know, and yeah. uh, and he's sort of a, a legendary producer. I mean, a it would, it would, it would be here until next year if we had to talk about all the people he's produced. But um, yeah. But yeah, and I'm so I'm so glad you, you you did that. And again, this song is a song that uh, it keeps on giving in a way because you know we did it uh, for my stage at show, and here we are. It ended up on the new album as well, Alone Together. But the difference, and I think that this is one of the things that um, that I've been so impressed about with not only you but with all the other artists on on this collaboration is that you know a lot of times you go into the studio and we all cut it up into pieces and record this that and the other where the stage the performances that we did including what's on alone together was really all of us just doing it from top to bottom right you know i think that that's a real <laughs> a, a, a true test to to the artistry that is of this album because as a you know the technology i didn't have the time for people to send me 20 clips and try to have to match it all up so i said oh God, just yeah. press play on the, on the video and press <laughs> play on the recording and go you know yeah but what if it's not perfect it doesn't matter it's right. you know but right. you know it's so yeah, yeah. So. that was that was definitely um a challenge that people don't necessarily think about um, right. when it comes to watching um, right. our performances online um, but i i loved it because it was like being on stage again you know Joseph uh, says, uh, "You and I, we rock. You all oh, rock." Thanks, you know, Joseph. That is, thank you, Joseph, for saying that. That's that's very sweet. Um, so I, I, I want to know. I I've done a little reading, but I want to know about. You grew up in D.C. Is that right? That's right. Yeah, and tell me to tell us what's the beginnings of Psy and and what uh, you know. How did you get to become the lovely? amazing Cy, the artist that you are now. <laughs> tell, tell us the, the path. I was, uh, oh, oh, shout out to Maria. She says she um, can't wait to get me back into Montreal. I can't wait, I can't wait to come back to Canada um, once it gets warmer. Um, yeah, I was born in New York, Michael, and, and my family moved to D.C. soon after, you know, maybe when I was about two. And, you know, uh, even though I, I didn't really have much family in D.C., um, I, I definitely consider myself a Washingtonian. Most Washingtonians, like, are from D.C., generations right. and generations, you know. Um, but, uh, you know, I fell into that that Washingtonian thing. And, and, and for kids, especially children who have any sort of inkling towards music, that means I fell into the go-go scene, you know. Mm. Go-go oh, music, yeah, go-go music is a big part of of our the, upbringing as, wow, as musicians. Wow, the culture there, wow, I did not yeah. know that, wow, yeah. okay. Yeah, and so um, so as soon as I graduated from high school, I joined a go-go band, because my mother wouldn't let me do it before sure. that. Sure. Uh, and, and I played keys in the band and, and sang background. And I never really considered myself a lead singer, you know, like that wasn't my thing. It wasn't even an aspiration for me, you know. Right. I was completely happy playing keys, you know, singing backgrounds, just being a part of the band, you right. know, making noises. Um, and, and, uh, and, I, and when I was in the go-go band, like I learned, I had to learn how to listen to music kind of differently because right. up until then I was really just playing classical piano. Wow. So I had to learn how to listen um, to the parts that I, that I had to play, you know, and just listen differently, you know, and get my brain to play horn parts and sing at the same time, <laughs> like all that kind well, of stuff. <laughs> right, but see, this is where I've uh, this. It, it makes sense to me uh, how music, how musical you are. Just not as a singer, performer, but you understand all the elements. And I think uh, it, what you're describing right now, because you have well, you play the piano, which is a wonderful thing uh, to do, so you understand harmonics, but also to be able to understand what all the different parts are that goes together to make you know make something really nice. So it totally it Aww. totally makes sense for me. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's an interesting way to grow up. Um, and, you know, and even vocally, like I said, I wasn't really doing much contemporary singing or contemporary music. Um, I was mostly doing choirs. You know, right. choir was my thing. Sure. Like, 
you know, county chorus, you know, all any chorus my high school offered, women's chamber, you know, <laughs> gospel right, right, concert. Right. Um, and then and then I did a county and then in the state of Maryland, I did all state and all, all eastern for the eastern seaboard. And right. And, I, and then when I was 16, I did uh, the U.S. National Chorus. And that was my first time going to Europe. Wow. And it was then, you know, that I saw quite literally like music can take me around the world. Right. I didn't know that, you right. know. It seemed like such a far-fetched reality to consider. Um, so, uh, you know, even though I didn't go to like a fine arts high school, um, and I don't even think my family really knew how serious I was about music until, you know, until I moved to California. <laughs> right. And when did, um, you when did you move? I moved after I graduated from Howard. I stayed in D.C. for almost a year mm. and, and worked on Capitol Hill. Wow. And then um, that last snowstorm in 96 or 97 is right. what made me move. Wow. <laughs> and, that's when I, and that's when I left and, and left the East Coast because I just couldn't take the winter anymore. So, so now you're in LA. Uh, did, yeah. did you did you already know people here, or did you kind of like uh, you know? I I came in 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 September 1991 or 1990 actually. Wow. And when I when I got here to the to the airport, I was like, I didn't know if I was going to go left or right. So right. what about you know? I knew one person, one right. person, and it was a good person to know. But I knew one person. And uh, what about you? Did I you... think I was like you. I think I knew one person. It was wow. my good friend Gordon Campbell. Do you know Gordon? Oh, of course, drummer? wonderful yeah. drummer and producer. I exactly. didn't realize that. So is Gordon he a DC went, guy too? Is he that went to that? Howard? Oh, he wow. went to Howard okay. University. Right, that's where right. that's where I know yeah. him from. And so I knew I knew Gordon, and uh, and then Gordon very quickly introduced me to everybody else who went to Howard that was in L.A. and you know and, and right. the whole music scene. Like he single handedly right. introduced me to everybody I needed to know. Wow. <laughs> and, uh-huh. No, go ahead, go ahead. I, yeah, I was going to say, Gordon played with a band. Do you remember Polyester Players? I do, of course. I, I um, they, they had a, like a regular gig somewhere yes, in town. Tuesday, that was, be, Tuesday but, nights at Luna Park. That's it, yeah, I remember and, that, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Gordon played with the Polyester Players, and I started hanging out at that at that venue, you know, just hanging out. Right. And one night, they had a dancer named Soul Sister, number one, um, and she had to leave the United States and move back to, um, I want to say Dubai or you right. know where she's from, and or London, I, so one of those. Yeah. And so they needed a dancer, and I jumped on stage, and I became a dancer for this band. And I'm but not you, a dancer at but all. But not singing, just dancing. But not singing. They didn't even know I could sing. Wow. And that was my first gig in L.A. <laughs> wow, amazing. <laughs> I was as a dancer for the polyester players, and I think I made like 20 bucks a night and two drink tickets. <laughs> wow. So now, so, <laughs> from dancing, so you were dancing with the polyester players. Uh-huh. Yeah. How do you go from that to singing with Whitney Houston? How does that, how, what's, right. how do you, because I know it just didn't go from that to that. That's gotta, it did not. Yeah. It did not go from that to that. Actually, um, so the first touring gig that I got um, professionally, wow, look at that, was, um, was with Kenny Lattimore. Oh, um, oh, Gordon, wow. Gordon okay. was the MD for Kenny Lattimore. Sure. Uh, Kenny also went to Howard University, as a matter of fact. And so, and so Kenny is on alone together as exactly. well. Exactly. Yeah. Small world. Yeah. So, so Gordon hired me to do the Kenny gig and, and that was, that really sort of broke me into the game. Wow. Um, and it was after that, that I was, uh, I had a good friend named Charlotte. I have a good friend named Charlotte. She was in that picture you just showed. And Charlotte was auditioning for Whitney Houston. And she wow. asked if I could take her to the mall to get an outfit. So I took her to the mall to get an outfit for Whitney Houston. And I took her home. And then she called me and said, hey, I got this Whitney audition for Whitney Houston. Can you take me to center staging? I said, sure, I'll take you to center staging. This is before Uber, you know, before. Sure, and, of course. And, and, yeah, and yeah, most yeah, people yeah, from yeah. L.A. just didn't call cabs. I don't know why, but they didn't. So I, I took her to center staging. Um, um, dropped her off, went back home. She called me a couple of hours later and said, hey, I just finished my audition for Whitney Houston. <laughs> Can you come pick me up? And I was like, Charlotte. But of course, I went and picked her up. And when I, I walked in, instead of just parking, we didn't have cell phones back then. And um, I walked in and found her in the studio. And it was just her and Ricky Minor, uh, Whitney's sure. musical yeah, director. Yeah. Sure, of course. Yeah. And so they still had a boom box set up and three mics. And Charlotte said, um, Ricky, this is my good friend, Cy. You should meet her. She's a great singer, too. And Ricky said, well, do you want her to take your gig? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could, you know, by the way, I could hear Ricky saying that, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, oh, Barry Eastman, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Um, and so. Um, oh, Barry's here. Oh, look yeah. at this. How cool is that? We were just 
just talking about you, Barry. Thanks for thanks for tuning into our little chat. Yeah, we were. We were just singing his praises as uh, yeah, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so so Ricky said, "Well, let's hear you right now." And and so I, I was like, okay, you know, um, kind of ready for anything. And right. he said, let's do I'm Every Woman. And right there on the spot, auditioned me. Uh, had all, you know, the three of us sing. Ricky, Ricky sang too. And, and, and just had us do, I'm every woman, it's all in me. You know, and, and I, did the, I did the background parts cause, because I knew them. Because right. remember I said I played in a go-go band and right, I right, sang right. background. So that's, I knew, I knew the background parts. Um, that's kind of all I, I used to listen right. to. Right. And then he had, uh, had to switch parts and, and I did it again and had to switch parts again and I did it again. And, and, wow. and, and, and he was like, great, um, if I need a soprano, I'll give you a call. And, and I was like, wow, that's cool. And, you know, I went home and was like, thanks, Charlotte. That was that was dope. Right. And maybe two or three months later, um, I got a call and he's like, hi, Cy, this is Ricky. How would you like to go uh, perform with Whitney Houston in D.C. at Constitution Hall live on HBO? Wow. And that was the beginning for me with Whitney. Wow. Yeah. My first show a- with her was in my hometown at Constitution Hall live on HBO. Wow, what, that's yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, was was uh, Ricky Lawson in the band at the time? No, it was uh, Michael okay. Baker. Oh sure, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, because you know it reminds me of that story with you taking your friend to the audition. You know, um, <laughs> Ricky told Ricky, um, unfortunately, who, who was not here, was one a, a legendary drummer, and yes. and uh, you know. Uh, when him and Greg Fillingaines, they were still living in Detroit, and they went and auditioned for um, uh, Stevie Wonder. As a matter of fact, no, Ricky, Ricky um, was auditioning for Stevie Wonder. Right. And they brought a cassette tape because Greg's like, bring a cassette tape. Right. Or, or just, you know, playing this. Right. And the funny part was Ricky didn't get the gig. Mm-hmm. But, but Stevie went, uh, who's playing the piano here? And he got the gig. Oh my <laughs> god! Kid. And then and then Ricky left the studio. Uh, he didn't know at the time when he left the studio that he didn't get the gig. But he's right. he's he's walking around the, the whatever the, where the mm-hmm. audition. Mm-hmm. And I guess Roy Ayers was down the hall. Wow! And uh, he poked his head in, and somehow he got that gig. Oh my god! From gosh. the same thing. Yeah, so Ricky told me that. That's it's amazing. It's crazy how some of these things you know how yeah. some of these things work. Um, wow! That's funny. Uh, I love yeah. that. Now, so you also you were you got a record deal, and this was uh, this was before or after um, the Whitney thing. This was um, kind of during, like kind of during the the Whitney thing, because that was like ninety eight to two thousand or so for me. I believe Whitney was two, 98 to two thousand one or something like wow. that. And the record deal probably happened around ninety eight. Yeah, so it was wow. around the same time. Um, that was a good. That was a. This was a good time for you there, Sai. Amazing. It, <laughs> it was and it wasn't. You know, because the really? record deal okay. ended up not really working out. Um, but I can, you know, and I made a whole album with this label, and 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 actually did it. Kind of, it kind of made two albums because I kind of redid the album. Or, right. It's it's a long story, but uh, even though that relationship didn't work out and it, it didn't pan out, right. I really became. Uh, an artist in that time because the only reason I took that record deal was because I I was I moved out here to be a songwriter right and every time I shot my songs around everybody thought it was a demo tape for you know to for someone to get a record deal right um, and I was like no 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 I'm trying to get these songs on your artist like put this right. on TLC you know whatever right um, and I was running from that part of myself, right. you know, and, and the only reason I took the record deal was because I felt like that was the only way my songs were going to get out. Um, right. So it was in that time that I really embraced the artist that I am, right. you know, right. today. So in that, well, you know, that, yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, the life has such a, a funny way to we think we're going on one path and somehow it's like, yeah, no. We're gonna go this way. <laughs> right. And, you know, we got to it's roll with the punches, right? Because it's it's. Um, it was only I always try to steer my life in the way I wanted to go, and you just right. you can't. It doesn't work like that. So yeah. once I tell you what, once I and and it wasn't awful long time ago, but once I decided trusting that wherever it's taking me is where it's supposed to go, and I know it mm-hmm. sounds like it's just really. I mean, but in a way, you can you can set out plans, right? But then just mm-hmm. you follow it. It also makes life a lot easier to sort of navigate and and not so stressful because you're right. like okay I'll trust that there's a reason why this didn't go that way but it's this way so right what what can we do we can you know um, 
we can make some music and be happy. Which, right. which by the way, brings me to okay. So I want to get back to um, now. The Barry uh, is tuned in. I think it's uh -huh. it's cool. So um, uh, to uh, some kind of way, and um, uh, again, uh, so happy that you are on alone together. And also, you know, at the um, at the end of the month on March twentieth, I'm having a big uh, album release uh, concert, a virtual album release concert, and uh, you'll be a part of it in some way or the other. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Some way or the other. Some way or the other. Um, I have an update for you on that, by the way. We'll okay, talk you do. This. Okay, we'll talk <laughs> about that. Okay, we'll talk about that. But anyway, so, um, but everybody will be a part of it. I've done some interviews. I've done, uh, that's going to be a lot of musical bits. And we're doing it, by the way, from a big production soundstage uh, down in Orange County. Um, that uh, actually my own my old sound uh, engineer he he has a, a, a production sound company and uh, backline you know renting out uh, instruments and all of that stuff and since the pandemic hit he got all the stuff that he usually rents out for festivals and to movie studios and whatever it is sitting in a warehouse and he's like well I'm just gonna build a, a production uh, so he has put basically the, the Rolls Royce version together of a, of a soundstage. So surrounding video walls in, in the, in the wow. top two, of course, all, he owned lights. So it lights and moving lights. And wow. I think it's eight or nine cameras and wow. and, um, and everybody, you know, it's, it's unbelievable. So that it's, sounds it's amazing. yeah, it's, 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 it's pretty cool. And, and I've decided I'm going to spring for that instead of doing it out of my studio. I'm going to spring for that big thing. We are going to have musicians there. Um, I'm, I'm, uh, our, our dear friend Cameron Smith is going to host it. Ah, Cameron! Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. As a matter of fact, I think he was around when, when I met you on that uh, that on one that of the cruise. cruise. Or, yes, yeah, right. When I you think were there with Bodie. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Anyway, so we're gonna have a good time. So so we'll see. You are gonna be a part of it one way or the other. One way or the other. <laughs> so, one way. Or the, yeah. No, well, I've, got, we, can, I've got a great update for you. So, okay. Yeah. Good. Okay. Well, <laughs> can, can we do a little bit like? This? By the way, this is what I was talking about earlier. I've never done anything like live live with somebody over this, and I'd love to do a little bit of some kind of way. It'll be. The unplugged version, but a new version. It'll <laughs> be the it, unplugged, yeah. unplugged. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we can. And try I get to play bit. with you playing piano too. I think that's so cool. <laughs> oh gosh, don't put, don't give me too much pressure. <laughs> <laughs> And by the way, can I just tell you, we got people tuning in from all over the world. I just saw at, at Philippines, I saw Egypt, I saw, I mean, it's, I, this I is kind of cool. Ecuador, the, yeah. Yeah, I know, this, this is, is too, too, it's too much fun. All right, well, let's, let's see what we can come up with here. it all away <laughs> even though by the way once we get off here i'm gonna ask you to do the rest of the song just for me <laughs> 
Oh my god. That was god. fun, man. Thanks that was for that. so great. Oh my <laughs> goodness. I actually this was this was a lot of fun for me. I don't know if you could tell. I'm smiling from <laughs> ear to ear here, but um Sai, my goodness, you sound so beautiful. And, oh, and, thanks, um, man. Is that a real Fender Rhodes you got there? It too? is. It's oh, a real Fender Rhodes. Yeah. It's a Mark II stage piano. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that I bought, on, I bought on Craigslist for about $300 maybe in 1998. Oh, my goodness, yeah. <laughs> I mean, just, you know, it's so funny. You, you get classic things, whether it's, it's uh, a car, an outfit, or an instrument, and uh, you just can't go wrong. Classic right. is classic. It'll never right. go out of style. You know? Yeah, man. <laughs> so, um, yeah, a, a couple of things. Uh, by the way, I, I can't, I can't even get over how much fun this was actually. Si, to do <laughs> this, this. Was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this yeah. is a lot of fun. We need to go on the road. Come, come on. on now. Yeah, come on now. As soon as the world opens back up, That's Michael. Right. And you know, talking about the road, I saw um, we had a kind of a funny conversation the other day about it, um, about uh, you going back on the road because I wasn't really sure what was happening. You know, I've been told this, that, and the other, and soon after that, um, I was asked to go and help out. Um, um, at a concert in uh, in April in Florida, uh, and my question to you is: You just went and did your first shows for uh, for a very long time in uh, yes. what North Carolina? In Charlotte yes, that's or right, yeah. in yeah. Charlotte, North yeah. Carolina, at a venue called Middle Sea Jazz. So, how was it getting back on stage? Look how at was you it, guys? <laughs> What's that? I look at the pictures. I'm like, wow, look at yeah, that. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Well, hey, listen, you know, we uh, <laughs> we aim to please. I know, that's right. <laughs> so how, how was it? I mean, after being home for so long and uh, mm. and how, how was uh, how was getting back on the road in front of an audience and, and just uh, getting on a plane? I mean, it, if, does it feel all brand new or? or you know, it doesn't feel all brand new. It feels like riding a bike. Um, yeah. You know, you re you just remember. Uh, how much you love riding a bike, though, you know, if, if, if that is something you love. I was so happy to be back on stage and, and back playing with live musicians and back uh, in front of people, you know. Yeah. Uh, musicians are kind of needy, or I should say yeah. recording artists. We're, we're kind of needy. We, 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 we need that positive, you know, reinforcement right yeah. away, right. Right. <laughs> you know. And so it was so It nice is a little be, lonely at home, isn't it's it? It's a the little bit yeah. lonely. I mean, the comments are beautiful. We love yeah. those. Yeah. But it's it, there's nothing like getting a standing right. ovation. So that was beautiful. And, and I think the people who came to uh, Middle Sea were just also, a lot of them, it was their first time out. Right. You know, it since you know since last March. So, right. Uh, so, they so they were, were excited. They, they were, were excited too. Were so, people yeah. kind of was it subdued because people were still uh, had been sort of been at home for so long and they were still unsure what you know what it all meant and was like you know uh, or were they just ready to get out of the house? And, yeah. Uh, I think you could say that they were a little bit subdued. Like I find I find myself having to say you know, how's everybody doing tonight? And everybody's yeah. like, yay, a little bit tepid. Yeah. And then I have to say, okay, right. look, I know yeah. we're all spread out, right. you know, because right. tables are six feet right. apart and whatever. I need you guys to be a little more enthusiastic. And then they, yeah. they snap right yeah. back into yeah. the way it used to be. Yeah. No, I, I, I can I can see that. Um, we're still working out. The, I think the promoters are still working out all the details as far as, you know, we go back out there. What is social distancing? What is safe? What is not? You know, right. I decided, you know, in, in just for my own sake, you know, I'm going to bring my own uh, talkback microphone this time. You know, I always bring my own saxophone, but but in that way, I don't have to worry about it. So it's it's just so interesting right. how how it's it is going to be the new new at least for now. You at know? least and, for uh, now. Yeah. But yeah. I find that I have found that this particular venue, at least, really went all out of their way. Uh, uh, you know, they do as much as they can to make yeah. and mitigate. You know, for safety, and and yeah. that means you know cleaning mics. I mean, I always bring my own mic anyway, Michael. Yeah. I've been doing that for 20 years. Yeah. But, <laughs> but, um, well, you're way ahead of time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but they really do go all out. And, and, you know, I'll, uh, some things are strange, like the merch table being behind plexiglass. Like yeah. that's, that feels a little strange, yeah. you know, I, I, I see, yeah. um, but, uh, yeah. but, but I'll probably up, up to wait on that a little bit. The merch, yeah. the merch thing. The just, merch, uh, yeah. yeah. Because, you know, I, I'm a new dad. So, yes, uh, so, you are. It's not. If it was just me, that's one thing, you know. Right. But I got, I got you other got things. To, I got other things to think about. Yeah. And, um, and, Important, uh, beautiful baby bundle of things. Yeah. But but, Sai, thank you so much for again for coming on here and and spreading the love and and your vibe. I just I adore you and I I, I love our friendship and I and I love you. So thank um, you. I love you back. And Michael, thank you for being so um, uh, patient with me. I know we had a last minute change. Thank you for being so forgiving you know, with that. 
and uh, and and thank you for always pushing me to 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 do a little to to be better. Like I wasn't expecting to play and sing today, but you were like, "Hey, can we do a little something?" And I can't say no to you. <laughs> <laughs> So thank you uh, well, for that, because you pushed me to be a better I, artist. I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but... Uh, no, it's a good thing. Oh, it's a good thing. Okay, yeah. all right. Well, well, thank you again, Asai, for, for, um, for coming on. It's, it's, a, it's a pleasure. I'm, I miss seeing you in person, and, uh, and, but I, this, what we did today, uh, this made me so happy. I just want you to know that. Uh, you know, so thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you yeah. so much. Everybody, Cy Smith, uh, we have been rolling your uh, um, your Insta Instagram and your social media awesome. handles Thank here. You. But you, uh, yeah, there it is, right? Um, and uh, we just we just love you and appreciate your Cy, and, and uh, we'll see what happens later in the month. <laughs> I, I look forward to it. Okay. I look forward to it. Thanks everyone for tuning in, and it's it's so nice, Michael. I can't wait to see you again later on this month. Thank you, Cy. All right. Wonderful. All right, everybody. That was incredible, Cy Smith. Um, wow, that was that. I, I had such a wonderful time. You know, I haven't played with. Usually, it's just me sitting in here playing. Uh, you know, a, alone, and and to have somebody who actually play along with it, it's it's an amazing feeling. It really is. But thank you so much for uh, for tuning in. And um, it is it, this is actually a, a lot of fun to do these uh, music and conversation. A little different than uh, what I've done before. So. Um, Next week's guest is going to be my buddy, Dave Koss. So I hope you can make it again. And it'll be Wednesday at 3. We're back to Wednesday at 3 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. Um, I want to remind you that, uh, again, on March 20th, uh, we have the big virtual album release concert with lots of special appearances by um, the artists on Alone Together, including Brian Culpertson, Boney James, Cy Smith, Dave Koss, Nick Colleone, uh, Kenny Lattimore, and many more. Um, we have performances and also uh, interviews, and uh, just can't wait for do that on the big production stage. Uh, it will be, again, something a little different, and I look forward to that. And of course, uh, uh, Alone Together is available uh, for pre-orders, and you can find, about, about, find out about it all on michaellington.com. It'll tell you all about the new album and also the um, a virtual album release concert. All right, everybody, thank you so much, and uh, I'll see you real soon. attention to the trouble I was in couldn't see my world was crumbling no I couldn't see it then. 